Hi, I'm Bryce Crittenden. Hi, I'm Caroline Land, and welcome back to EPL's Overdue Fines. Caroline, how's it going today? I'm doing really well, Bryce. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we can't complain too much this week. It is late October uh, when we're recording this. The sun's out, it's beautiful. I think we might even hit double digits today. So we can't, uh, you know, we can't say that very often for uh, late October weather. No, I've really been enjoying this weather. It's been a little bit of everything, which is nice. Uh, but today it's nice and bright and sunny. So let's enjoy it while we can. It's funny because on days like this, where it is like really, you know, bright and sunny out, I kind of feel extra motivated to, you know, get, I've always motivated at work, uh, just in case any of our <laughs> leadership team is listening. But uh, just on days like this, uh, you know, I feel extra motivated to kind of like, you know, you know, maybe learn new skills or uh, pick up a new hobby or just kind of just kind of try something new. And that's kind of along the lines of what we're talking about today. Well, we actually have it's going to be like a two day festival. Uh, it's going to be taking place on the weekend of November 21st and 22nd. And it's going to have a uh, two full days of talks that you can enjoy from home. And it's called the how to festival. Um, I'm really excited to be chatting about this day because it is something new that EPL is working on. Yeah. I think that, um, I mean, I love a good festival and Edmonton as a festival city, we've really been feeling, um, that absence this year in a lot of ways. And so maybe this is going to be the hot new festival on the Edmonton festival scene. I think it I think it should be and it probably will be too. Yes. I know we wanted to do this one in person but just obviously with covid restrictions and uh but I think this is this is a good way anyway. I mean you can uh sit at home in your PJs or whatever which I, it's probably just me maybe in PJs at like three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, but Caroline, you're shaking your head. No, it, uh, yeah, in that it is not just you because it is also <laughs> me. And then I started thinking maybe we need some overdue fines branded uh, loungewear. We should, Ooh, we should get is... someone working on that. I think so. Yeah. I'll make a note. If only we knew somebody who worked in marketing. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So I think we can, we'll make a call after this, but in yeah. the meantime, uh, yeah, it'll be a great opportunity for people to uh, be comfortable and try some stuff out and learn a few things. So joining us today to talk all about the how-to festival and just really uh, learning in general are some of our uh, colleagues here at EPL. First, we want to welcome back EPL's Manager of Adult Services and City of Learners and probably most important title, official friend of Overdue Fines, Melanie St. Ange. Melanie, how are you today? I'm great. Always happy to be here. Um, and then we also have a first time guest on the show today. She's the manager of EPL's Highlands branch. Uh, please welcome Susan McTitian to, uh, to the show. Susan, how are you today? Oh, I'm really good. Thanks so much for having me today. I'm excited to be here. How is Highlands doing today, Susan? What's it like there? Well, we're uh, blessed with a lot of windows at Highland. So because you had mentioned, Bryce, the weather is really nice. It's super bright and sunny in here. Well, yeah, thank you so much for uh, both of you for joining us today. Um, I know our listeners are going to be really interested, I think, in learning all about the How To Festival. And we are going to be chatting about that on today's show. And I know uh, both of you have uh, lots of insights about uh, what uh, listeners can expect and uh, some of the some of the uh, guest courses that uh, people can take. And uh, I've got an inside scoop on one myself in particular <laughs> that I can't wait to talk about. Uh, before we get into our new finds, though, uh, I actually just uh, want to give a quick shout out to a uh, listener. I want to say hi to listener Rob. Uh, he had sent me an email uh, here the other week letting me know about another podcast called Score the Podcast. So basically, it's a podcast uh, where uh, they chat with people who score films and TV. Uh, Caroline, that's uh, something we talked about on our last episode, uh, the Halloween one, when we were talking about uh, the music by John Carpenter from, from Halloween. Um, in particular, since he's a loyal listener, he knows that I am a bit of a professional wrestling fan. <laughs> so uh, he actually recommended an episode to me that featured uh, Jim Johnston, who created so many iconic 
WWE theme entrances. So uh, that was really nice of Rob to reach out and let me know about that episode. We'll have a link to it uh, in today's show notes. But uh, Caroline, we always love hearing from listeners. And it's cool to get, we, we have a lot of recommendations and picks on this show. But uh, it's really nice to get those recommendations from listeners too, right? Absolutely. There, uh, when that came in, I was reading, and it did say, you know, specifically for Bryce. But I was reading and thought, this sounds pretty interesting. I might want to check this out too. So you never know uh, which of us might be interested in something. So uh, yeah, it's always really great to get uh, a message from listeners. Absolutely. Uh, so let's get into our recent overdue finds picks. Uh, Susan, it's, since you are uh, appearing on the show for the first time, uh, what's something that you've been enjoying lately? Um, I was going to let you guys know of the two um, books that I'm reading right now. I usually have two on the go. I have my audio book that I use like for when I'm going to and from places. And then I have a book and I typically read um, when I go to bed. So um, those tend to move a little bit slower than my audiobooks. But my audiobook I'm listening to right now is The Witches Are Coming by Lindy West. And um, I know she was just at Lit Fest. And Caroline, I know you had mentioned she has a new book that's out right now. And so I thought The Witches Are Coming was her most um, recent one. But she, cause she does talk about um, the election of Trump and how it wasn't as much of a surprise last year. Um, the last time as um, as maybe some people thought it was because of kind of the stuff that had been going on in, in terms of um, people thinking that feminism had gone too far. And she really links it to lots of like popular culture things. And like she kind of brings up things that I've always like really loved and cherished, you know, like the movie 16 Candles. I'm like, oh, like I can't say that's one of my favorite movies anymore. Like I'll never be able to look at it the same way. And where I'm at right now is where she's talking about pockets and like how people like talk about like, oh, my dress is so awesome. It has pockets. And I like have been one of those people who's been really like impressed to have pockets and pants and things. And so she kind of talks about that. And I just had to like stop for a little bit and think about like my own um, kind of like why, why pockets are important and maybe I shouldn't actually have to mention how great pockets are. Um, the other book that I'm reading is the one I just started. It's Motherless Brooklyn. And so I'm just getting into it. It's a mystery and I love um, mysteries, but because it's my book that I read before I go to bed, like pretty much it's like one page per day. So I'm just at the very beginning. So just getting into it, but really looking forward to reading that and then following it up with the Netflix show. Nice. Uh, a couple of things with that. Um, it's, it's interesting because, uh, you're talking about Trump and everything we're recording this uh, a couple of days before Halloween. So when this episode comes out, the election is going to be over, which is so weird to me, uh, to be kind of living in that, that cycle. Um, and then also too, regarding the pockets thing. Um, so I didn't have any sisters or anything growing up. So I had no idea that, pockets were such a big deal in uh women's women's clothing until uh, my wife cheryl and i started seeing each other and yeah i would definitely hear you know she'd try something on she'd be like oh these actually have like pockets and uh i had no idea that was uh that was a thing growing up oh yeah it's a it's a big deal <laughs> yeah no kidding <laughs> lindy west uh, i'll just mention her newest book is specifically about revisiting some of those movies that you mentioned like i don't think 16 candles is in that one but uh she goes back and, and looks at um movies to see if they've held up or not uh and i've really been enjoying that the lens that she's looking at it's just a lot of fun to read and, and um and we think about some of the things that i watched less critically when i was younger yeah uh 16 candles is on tv a lot and uh every like it's a movie i find to be really funny but at the same time like you go back and you watch it now and you like you can see um you know it's one of those things i'll kind of comment on like wow this would never get me <laughs> like this today like this is very problematic <laughs> obviously so um yeah it's it's always interesting to hear uh different um 
I guess, from different people on, you know, why those sort of things really don't hold up and shouldn't hold up anymore. That's right. Yeah. Melanie, how about yourself? What have you been enjoying lately? Well, I actually watched Hocus Pocus with my kids uh, the other night. It was our family movie night. And I had the same thought, like, you know, I hadn't watched that movie since I was a kid. And there were so many um, just comments that were like over sexualizing these teenagers and just like things that um, people say to Sarah Jessica Parker because she's like the beautiful one and she wears a lot of makeup and they call her a trollop all the time. And I was like, oh my goodness, the shift that has gone on even just in the past few years. Like, I don't even know that watching that movie five years ago that I would have had the same reaction as I did watching it with my kids. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Now I'm just, you know, thinking that I I maybe need to be ready for conversations. Every time I watch an old favorite, it's no longer just a, you know, a happy memory. It's going to come with some some, you know, kind of difficult conversations or context that I really feel I need to share with them. So, yeah, it's it's a it's interesting. It's good. It's good change. Um I've been watching Succession, which is amazing. It's in our collection. We have the first and the second seasons on uh, on DVD. It's an HBO show. Um, so that would be my recommendation for what I'm enjoying right now. It is, it is truly one of the best pieces of TV I've seen um, in the past few years. Um, I really loved Fleabag before that. And this is the first show I've watched since then that I am um, that I think the the quality, like the characters are so well written. So like the, it's so nuanced and there's uh, family dynamics at play. And it talks about, there's kind of a, a network um, that is based on Fox news. So it, it talks about um, kind of the responsibility that we have um, or that a network has in the news that it puts out and how it influences an entire country, which we're seeing playing out right now with uh, the election coming up. So it feels very timely. Uh, that, the name Succession, it sounds so familiar. Who's in that? Um, there's, it's no one that you, like no one is super famous um, in it. Um, there's Brian Cox. He's like the main, yeah, right? That's, and, that's yeah. what I'm thinking of, yeah. Yeah, and then there's... Um, I think Rory Culkin is in it. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, Kieran. Yeah. He's uh, he he's in it, and he just chews up the scenery. He's so good, so funny. So yeah, he's probably the most famous. I forgot about him, but he's actually like my favorite part of the show because he's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, that's a show I've seen ads for, and I think it's we've talked about this on the show before, where there's just so much good TV today, and you hear those recommendations, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go check that out, except I've got like a list of like 10 other series I, I need to get through first, but uh, no, it's, that's good to know that you're enjoying that, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely be moving that up on my uh, to-watch list. Caroline, uh, how about you? What have you been enjoying lately? I recently watched a movie from 1953 called uh, The Hitchhiker. It's directed by Ida Lupino, who is one of um, the first big uh, like studio filmmakers who was a woman uh, in the 50s. And uh, she directed this thriller that um, is... I think still want still part of like the standard for really tense movies that you watch and you're just like, how are they dragging this out for 70 minutes? My adrenaline level is just here. I can't deal with this anymore. Uh, but the story is that um, two men are going on a fishing trip and they pick up a hitchhiker. And within minutes, he reveals himself to be um, an escaped convict who's also a psychopath. And he says he's going to kill them um, once they reach their destination. And he makes them take him to Mexico and the whole movie is just basically this uh, tense watching this situation play out with this uh, with this guy, and you're 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 not rooting for him because he's so clearly the the villain of the story. But you're just like, how is this going to work? What is going to happen? Um, it's a black and white movie that uh, really uses 
the black and white cinematography effectively. Um, the one, they at one point they are like out of the car and going on foot, and uh, the way that it shows like the desert and the darkness and the light of day is just really really effective. So it's seventy minutes of just pure adrenaline. Uh, the Hitchhiker, and I streamed this one on Canopy. The one thing I've noticed too about watching uh, black and white films in high definition is they look incredible. Uh, you might not think that off like right away, but um, yeah, I've gone back and I watched stuff like Psycho on on Blu-ray and a few others like that, and yeah, they they always look incredible in high definition. So um, yeah, it's it's good to hear about those kind of older movies. And um, but it, yeah, that movie sounds that movie sounds really good. And hey, you know, only seventy minutes. A lot of people complain about the length of movies these days, so. Uh, that's the other thing too about older movies is they do tend to uh, be uh, pretty short on runtime. They're either like 75 minutes or four and a half hours. There's not a lot <laughs> in between there in terms of like yeah. epics, but this one, uh, I did not want it to be any longer. My heart couldn't take it. So it's really well done. It's what a about good endorsement? <laughs> what about you, Bryce? How, what have you been enjoying? Uh, so I'm going to kind of uh, break one of the rules of overdue fines, and I'm going to actually recommend another podcast. Um, it is uh, actually, and because it does tie into our collection, actually, so there's a reason for it. Um, I've been recently kind of while working at home over lunch, I'll watch like a couple of old episodes of the office and I've just been slowly working my way through the series again. Um I just recently finished the series and I went and I listened to a limited edition podcast uh, that's available on Spotify called the oral history of the office. So if you are a fan of the office and who isn't definitely give this, uh, give this uh, podcast a listen. It's uh, 12 episodes. So it's just very limited. Each episode is only about 35 to 45 minutes, but uh, it's hosted by Brian uh, Baumgartner who played one of my favorite characters on the show kevin malone and uh they go through um everything about the show like how it was basically started as the you know original british version starring ricky ricky gervais how they brought it over to america how nbc had zero faith in it and how pretty much uh the box office success of the 40 year old virgin pretty much uh made sure that the office stuck around on on tv uh you get some great uh inside information on casting some of the people who were almost cast on the show and uh just just everything in general from the actors you know realizing that the show pretty much was going to be coming to an end and kind of how nbc didn't really have as much faith in it as they should and how it really became one of the most successful shows of all time so it was uh, it's a really well done podcast lots of interviews with writers and cast and uh, stuff like that too um one of my other favorite parts too of of the podcast is they interview uh, Billy Eilish, and you know she's eighteen years old, and they're like, the one thing that they've been finding really funny about The Office is that. Um, a lot of young people have been watching it and they kind of say it's almost like comfort food and how these types of office roles, uh, the show kind of, you know, shows these people working at a paper company to be really mundane, but it's almost kind of like people want those jobs now because they're very, they're harder to find. So yeah, younger people love watching the office, including Billie Eilish, who I guess watches like four episodes per day. But uh, give it a listen. It is on Spotify. Uh, it's called The Oral History of uh, The Office. So by the way, also too, if you're on Spotify, Overdue Finds is also <laughs> on Spotify. And uh, you can also borrow all nine seasons of The Office from us at EPL. Caroline, are you an Office fan? I uh, I do like it. My uh, favorite episode is uh, the dinner party one, and oh, yeah. which, uh, if you know uh, which one that is, that probably says a little too much about me. But I just find that one just so funny. That's always good. So the How-To Festival is a City of Learners initiative. Melanie, I know you've been on the show before, but uh, can you share with any new listeners what City of Learners is all about? So the City of Learners is an initiative that is led by the community, and it lives at the Edmonton Public Library. So it was actually started 
by uh, Mayor Don Iveson back when he was a counselor. And um, yeah, it's, it's something that the library has sort of uh, had stewardship over for the past uh, eight years or so. And the goal is really to partner with both formal and informal learning organizations with the goal of providing inclusive learning opportunities uh, for Edmontonians. So we try as much as possible to kind of um, pilot new ideas and engage in different activities that provide that learning opportunity for everyone in our city. Um, I mentioned in past episodes, I, I do work with you on the City of Learners Initiative, and uh, it's been really incredible here over the past, I want to say really like six to eight months. It seems like uh, we've been having like a ton of different programs. And I guess what's nice about the program too is um, obviously we did host that uh, talk that we had online, a uh, conversation about racism. There's been a lot of other programs like that too. So um, it, uh, it's, a, it's a really important program at EPL. Uh, so can you tell us more about that How To Festival and why is now the perfect time to host it? The How To Festival has been an idea that has been kind of floating around for us uh, for the past couple of years. And we've just been, we just really love the idea of collaborating with both um, people from inside the library because we have so much uh, expert knowledge throughout our staff, but also uh, bringing in people from the community to share um, just kind of unique things that you wouldn't have necessarily an opportunity to find um, and also to kind of curate all of that and put it together. So there's always, you know, especially now in COVID times, there's tons of virtual learning opportunities, but um, it can be hard to kind of sift through and, and see um, what would be really appealing to you. And, you know, some things cost money. Um, so this is really our chance to provide two days of learning uh, at your own pace, you know, you, you attend whichever sessions that are interesting to you. And we have a really broad spectrum of topics that should appeal to everybody. I'm excited too, because of it being um, offered online, um, there's, uh, there's chances to kind of like pop into a session and then, um, Maybe you have to do some other things and then you can pop into another session as well. So I think it, the format, even though maybe we hadn't initially planned it to be online, is actually um, going to be helpful for, for this event. So it's kind of nice because if it was in person, it's it's not as awkward kind of sneaking into the back of one of our program rooms as as somebody's talking. You can just kind of quietly open up that laptop or iPad or something and uh, just kind of silently join that way. <laughs> turn off, turn on your camera. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so part of the How To Festival, there's actually going to be like three themes or streams, if you will. Basically, the themes are how to make a difference, how to tell your story, and how to find beauty. What made you decide uh, on those themes? I think like some of the themes were chosen just because of the time that we're in now, like with the pandemic, lots of the social unrest. So um, maybe people are feeling like a little bit helpless or feeling like they want to do something. So we chose the how to make a difference. Um, the how to find beauty is like winter's coming. Um, we just finished with summer. It can be dark time for people. So finding beauty was something that was important. Um, and then also how to tell your story because we are at the library and stories are, are uh, bread and butter. So I think that, that those three kind of became quickly apparent as, as good themes to kind of go with. Yeah, especially the, uh, you know, how to tell your story one it's everybody you know i always joke around that everybody always has a story to tell and i think sometimes people people don't uh maybe realize how easy it is to kind of tell your story and um i know that uh, not to self-promote here i'm actually going to be doing one of the how to tell your story sessions on uh, launching a podcast so um uh, yeah, I mean, those are all, you know, super important themes, especially the, um, you know, how to find beauty as well, especially during winter. That's, uh, that's, that's super important. 
I think that there's going to be a real emergence of that this winter as people, we are, we already kind of know going into it that living in this pandemic world is going to be a bit different um, and we don't know what it looks like yet. So I think there's going to be a, a real exploration of what that that means. And that's a nice segue, Bryce, into my next question, which is uh, what, who are some of the speakers and what are some of the presentations that people can sign up for? We have some really fun things planned. Um, we have uh, speakers, uh, for example, we have some speakers on mental health. We have some speakers. Um, we have Marielle Elizabeth, who's joining us. She's an influencer in Edmonton, and uh, she is going to talk to us about how to um, how to regain control of your social media. So she has really taken her Instagram platform and turned it into a really positive um, uh, a really positive. A way to connect with people around body acceptance, um, diversity, inclusion. So we're really excited about that. We also have uh, Andrew Parker, who's joining us. He was he was um, on our panel on racism, and I was so struck by how positive he is and how hopeful he is about the future and how much he fights and um, you know, how, how hard he works just to make change every single day. So he's going to be talking to us about how to stay positive in the face of adversity. I'm really excited about that. We also have, um, in partnership with the University of Alberta, we have Dr. Denise Larson, who will be joining us. And she's going to talk to us about her research on hope, which, you know, in these times, how to find hope, um, you know, how to hold on to it and just kind of the different aspects of her research around hope, uh, I think is, is going to be really timely, really excited for that one. And we have some of like Bryce, um, some of our EPL experts will be, um, t uh, will be providing um, sessions as well. So um, the Makerspace Lab opened up in the Milner Library and they already have like huge lineups for some of their many classes that they offer. They have some self-certification classes. So they will be offering some um, information sessions um, in the, one is in the Finding Beauty, or I guess both of them are in the Finding Beauty, but one will be on the 3D printing that they have. And they have quite a few like awesome ways to do 3D printing in the lab. And then the other one is the Cricut um, Maker and Caroline, you know that one because you have that at the Capilano Library, but that will be another session that people can attend as well. And that might save them from having to um, head down to the Milner Library while there is a bit of a lineup for some of the um, sessions that they're offering there. Um, Kate Gibson, who is the manager of the Sprucewood branch, she's going to do a session on genealogy. And um, Evelyn Delgado, who works um, in youth services, she designs spaces. She's going to be talking about loose parts play. And some of the things that she's going to talk about is um, having loose parts available for the younger children and how it's a really um, great way to engage um, young children and their development and their learning. And uh, this morning, as I was trying to find some glue in our house, I opened up our loose parts cupboard and like, everything came out like rolls, paper, and I had no time to put it back. So I know that that's what I'll see when I get back home. But she's also going to kind of talk about how to organize a loose parts area because it can get like really out of hand in a, in a quick way. Maybe I should go to that one because while I do not have any children, um, I think I subscribe to loose parts housekeeping. So um, <laughs> everything is just kind of there. Uh, maybe I should go to that. But I also appreciate the shout out to uh, Kate, who Overdue Finds listeners will know is the, uh, I think we, the official best friend of the podcast. I think. Yes. Yes. That's what we, <laughs> yeah. we've determined her title is. Yeah. That would be a good one. <laughs> Um, so Melly, I just want to quickly touch on something you said there. Uh, so sessions on mental health, um, especially as we head into winter here, um, I don't think there could be a, uh, I mean, all the, all the classes are going to be important, but I, I think especially that one, you know, I think everybody's, you know, everybody's tired of COVID and you got winter coming up with it. Um, you know, it's, it's a very stressful time for everybody. And, uh, yeah, I, I imagine 
those sessions are going to be uh, so important for us to host, right? Yeah, we're, we're trying to find, um, yeah, sessions that are really kind of uplifting while also teaching us something, uh, you know, bringing us some different perspectives. We, you know, we haven't, there's a, a bunch of other sessions too, and I don't know if I should reveal all of them or just kind of, you know, tease that people should go, um, go check it out. But yeah, we have you know, other sessions on learning Cree. We have uh, sessions on making uh, rug making, um, sessions on uh, appreciating modern music, which is a partnership with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. So yes, I, ho I hope people are getting excited hearing all of these uh, wildly different, but also, you know, thematically linked presentations. Well, the Cree one is taught by a teacher um, named Les, and he's the guy who had taught the in-person Cree lessons at the Highlands Library and the Milner Library, and he's also doing online ones, and they're very popular. He has a huge following. So if you aren't sure whether you wanted to attend one of his classes, this would be like a chance to have a sneak peek. I love the like built into the concept of the city of learners, as you mentioned, Melanie, is the the formal and informal learning opportunities. And this is kind of kind of like a hybrid of them where it's a bit more structured than just going out and, and doing like independent learning, but uh, or experiential learning. But it's it's. I mean, you can just kind of try it out from the comfort of your own home or or the library. If you're at the library and uh, on one of our computers, maybe uh, you can just check it out um, because it is about lifelong learning and having these opportunities to uh, learn a new perspective, hear a new story, get something the, to experience that maybe you've never have before. I just find it really exciting. And I mean, I, I, I know it's bad form for me to answer my own question, but for why is right now the perfect time for this? I think it's because we need this as a city, as, as, as people right now, we need some of this um, excitement and passion about uh, what, what could be possible, uh, particularly right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I think another aspect of the, the festival format and how we're doing this and how it's not just classes that people are taking on their own time, it's people coming together and learning together at the same time and making that kind of, you know, it's a loose commitment, but it's still a commitment to show up and be there together and to learn from um, this person who is who is taking the time to kind of impart their, their enthusiasm, their passion and their learnings around whatever topic. And there's also a, a community aspect because there's going to be an opportunity for people to ask questions and to engage in conversation with each other. So I think that's something that we sometimes lose out on well not sometimes you do lose out on that um that opportunity when you're doing when you're learning on your own so i think there's a there's a role for both you know sometimes you just want to absorb it and you want to do it on your own time like maybe like 11 p.m on a tuesday night feels like the perfect time to you know go into lynda.com and learn something but sometimes it feels like you know this is my weekend of learning where i'm going to get together with other people and we're all going to be together and i'm hoping that there will be a sense of community that kind of emerges from the festival and that you'll see the same session maybe you you both attend the session on on you know to our uh Sunday at 10 and then you also see each other again later on in the day and then um, these are connections that we can build uh, through the library that we haven't been able to do in person but this festival is giving us that opportunity to do that again which is really exciting. Yeah, you can pretty much binge on uh, on learning that whole weekend. I think it's I think it's gonna be fun. I'm I was very uh, honored to be asked to be part of it, and I'm excited about uh, sharing some of uh, I guess my limited knowledge on launching a podcast. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, speaking with uh, anybody who's really interested in starting starting their own show or just on how to podcast in general. I think it's I think it's gonna be really fun. Not just any podcast. It's award-winning podcast <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right thank you and you were one of the first people that we thought of honestly like I as soon as the word like podcast came into my mind I was like I can't think of anyone but Bryce so <laughs> very well, excited don't don't sell yourself short you're, <laughs> you're super pumped 
<laughs> uh, so, you know, Melanie, you talk about like learning kind of, um, you know, on it at a time when that's, that's good for you. So maybe like you said, it's Tuesday at 11 o'clock. So really since the pandemic hit, you know, you hear about a lot of people who are maybe learning new skills or new hobbies. So my question to everybody is, has anybody learned a new skill or maybe even picked up a new hobby during the pandemic? Susan? Um, I like was home with my family a lot. And so we were eating a lot and I'm like, I don't mind cooking, but I've kind of got a little bit more into it. And I learned how to make a Dutch baby, which is like really, really easy to make. It's like a kind of pancake that you make in your cast iron pan and it's really beautiful. So it's like on lots of people's Instagram stuff. It gets really um, impressive. It's got eggs, flour, sugar, and milk. And you basically like fry the the batter in your cast iron pan and then you put it in your um, oven and it cooks for 20 minutes and it's just like a giant like Yorkshire pudding but it's sweet and so you can put like uh, powdered sugar on top and it just looks beautiful and so um, that's something that I made and during the pandemic I had a lot of time to make it but now my son like he'll be he'll be like Tuesday morning and we've slept in and he's like <laughs> I want a Dutch baby and it's like there's no way but <laughs> so the ex breakfast expectations were set a little too high so now I have to scale them back. <laughs> I also maybe like the idea of somebody just maybe randomly walking by your house at that time and just hearing a child scream, I want a Dutch baby. <laughs> so I'm, like, mm, I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> Unless they're like really devout Instagram people and then they'll know. Yes. <laughs> I know I had never heard of it until you mentioned it. So I definitely would have been the one of those people who would have <laughs> definitely been raising my eyebrow and uh totally have been wondering what was going on. <laughs> uh Melanie, how about you? Uh, I also got into cooking and I've, I've been wanting to make a Dutch baby for so long. So I think this is the motivation I needed. You made it sound really easy. So I yeah, Dutch babies on my list. Um, and one of the things that I uh, finally got around to doing was downloading a meditation app and just really trying to get this meditation going. Uh, thing going because I just keep hearing about it all the time that it's one of the key things that you can do to really, um, you know, have like a, you know, stabilize your mood and helps with your focus, helps with sleep. So I've been doing it. Um, you know, it's, it's not earth shattering yet, but it's one of those things that is cumulative. So the more you do it, the better you're supposed to feel. So I'm going to continue, uh, continue doing that. Caroline, how about you? Um, a lot of people during the pandemic really threw themselves into uh, gardening, whether it was through the summer in their outdoor gardens or inside with potted plants. And um, my, I'm, I am a very, very beginner. And so I started at my skill level and I purchased um, a chia pet and uh, focused my all of my love onto <laughs> my little uh, baby Yoda Chia Pet, um, the child from the series The Mandalorian. Um, I bought it because it was cute. But then as you know, I started growing the the the, the seeds on it, um, it was a lot of fun. So um I think that's pretty much where my gardening skill level uh still is, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah, I know you sent me a photo on Twitter the other night of yeah. uh, of your baby Yoda. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was awesome. And yeah, you're right. You do have to start somewhere. Um, I don't have a single plant in my place. I, I probably should, but uh, Cheryl and I both joke around that it would probably just die. So maybe we should also start off with a, a baby Yoda chia pet. It was the first, it was the first living one. And I'm just looking around. I don't have anything in my, in my room room that I can just grab and show you which is for the listeners at home is just fine because I forget that you can't see me um but I do have some plants in my my apartment but they are they are fake they are like the like plastic grass that I just have for a little burst of color in a corner uh so this was the first um living plant that I had um attempted and uh I I was really proud of it. And so uh I think I think maybe I'll try it again. 
maybe get a different themed chia pet yeah i think so now that i have um some knowledge of like how to spread it out over the <laughs> the terracotta planter uh piece but um yeah i think you know who knows where where the world of chia might take me next maybe if there's some space in next year's um if there happens to be a how-to festival next year, Caroline, you can have a... Yeah, a how to buy things off the internet that uh, bring you joy. So I'm doing pretty well on that one. <laughs> I uh, speaking of chia pets, the other and this is probably a few months ago. Uh, I noticed that there was a Rick and Morty chia pet, so you could uh, kind of decorate the hair of Rick Sanchez. And uh, Cheryl was not letting me buy that one. <laughs> I wanted a chia pet so bad growing up. Yeah, like they were on commercials all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm so I can't believe I forgot about chia pets all these years. I need My a chia, chia pet. Got moldy. Yeah, he did not drive the one I had when I was a kid <laughs> it was really disappointing <laughs> yeah how about you Bryce oh yeah uh, just like Susan and Melanie um mine I guess was um kind of doing more cooking at home like I haven't really been experimenting a lot with different things but um just definitely not uh ordering out as much um I find like when I was in the office like five days a week it was so much easier just to be on my way home and I would get lazy and just be like ah I'm gonna hit McDonald's on the way home and uh but yeah no just it it helps that I have been working from home the majority of the time since March so it has given me you know I don't have that commute time which is nice because then it gives me more time to actually make food at home. Kind of experimented more on the barbecue this year and kind of doing stuff that typically I don't really cook a lot of on the barbecue. Mm -hmm. Stuff like chicken breasts just because they can, you know, dry out so easily. Um, even stuff like salmon as well. So, um, yeah, just trying out uh, different stuff that way. It's been uh, It's been really good and fun. Before we get to our roundtable questions, Bryce, uh, can you share what we'll be chatting about on our next episode? Yeah, it's the Canadian show that everyone is talking about after it became the first show in history to sweep the four major acting categories at the 2020 Emmys. And, and it also took home the award for Outstanding Comedy. Yes, we're going to be chatting all about Shit's Creek, as well as some of our other favorite canadian shows um longtime listeners of overdue fan uh, overdue finds know that uh we talked about schitt's creek quite a bit in our march madness tournament because it almost won oh, wow. um so it's funny caroline i just started watching schitt's creek for the very first time to prepare for our very next episode and i've really been enjoying it so far okay. so yeah i can't wait to talk about it more I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, there are uh, definitely it's a show that has a lot of fans, uh, a lot of really great characters, very funny. The actors are amazing. Uh, plus, it's Canadian. So uh, I think there's a lot where we'll be able to really dig in and talk about. Yeah, I'm. Have you watched the whole series? No, I'm still working on it, but I'm. Uh, okay. I'm. Yeah, it's episode prep work for the next one that I'm really enjoying doing. <laughs> yeah, me too. No, it's it's been fun, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk more too about Canadian TV in general. And maybe uh, I was hesitant on it at first because I think it was a Canadian show. So I know that sounds terrible, but we'll we'll go a little bit more in depth into that and on our next episode yeah let's break into bryce's head and explore <laughs> what's happening there with canadian television that's right okay so time for as we wrap things up here time for our quick roundtable questions um master classes have become very popular thanks in large part to the different celebrities that you can learn from so my question for the group is which master class would you be most interested in signing up for? I sent a link out to everybody before we recorded. So I'm curious to see what everybody picked. Melanie, uh, which masterclass would you sign up for? There were so many cool ones. Um, there's some cool ones on writing, like from Margaret Atwood, that I thought would be really interesting. But then I saw that Serena Williams teaches tennis. And I thought this would be my chance to really level up my non-existent skills in tennis. 
Um, and I just think it's so cool that someone with that level of um, ability and success would would be humble enough to think like, oh yeah, I can, you know, this is attainable and I can just break it down for people and they'll be able to play too. Like, I just love that, um, that mindset that anyone can play tennis like Serena Williams. <laughs> Susan, how about you? Which uh, class are you taking? Well, I get lots of them. Um, they come up on my Instagram feed quite a bit. And the one that most recently came up, and it does tie into food, is the Adelungi one. Um, he, he's like a cook who does lots of stuff with um, like vegetables and stuff like that. And he kind of makes things accessible. And so I think that would be the one that I would um, take like right now. Um, but yeah, the list of things that you can do is so impressive. Like the Mark Jacobs one on fashion design. Um, yeah, I think there's lots, lots that you could just learn every day. Ballet <laughs> with Misty Copeland. <laughs> yeah, just be yeah. practicing ballet in your living room, maybe. And yeah, why not? Oh, perfect. <laughs> Caroline, how about you? What are, what are you taking? The one that jumped out at me was uh, taught by Robin Roberts on effective communication. And I think that um, as a journalist, broadcaster, uh, host of Good Morning America, she has her sports background. I think that she would be really, I think, an effective teacher at um, effective communication. And particularly when I'm thinking about, you know, the podcast, I could maybe brush up on some of my uh, skills around, um, you know, effective listening and drawing out people's stories. So uh, Robin Roberts is, I think, who I want to take some lessons from. What about you, Bryce? Who are you signing up for? There was a bunch that I was definitely uh, interested in. Like Melanie, I was kind of um, most interested in ones that I feel like I would have no business doing whatsoever. So like Tony Hawk teaches skateboarding. I haven't been on a skateboard since I was probably 11 or 12 years old. So the notion of like 40 year old me uh watching this video and then getting on a skateboard uh you know watching this video of tony hawk this legend maybe teaching me how to uh <laughs> how to go on a half pipe or something like that would be <laughs> would be really funny i thought there's a really great skate park over uh by the capilano library bryce so next time you're over for maybe a meeting or or something uh bring your skateboard and uh you can just pop on over to the the fulton skate park and i think we can make that dream come true I think so. I will be wrapped head to toe in like bubble wrap. <laughs> and I'll, I'll look ridiculous, but I'll be safe. Doing I it. think this could be the very first Overdue Finds video episode. So maybe we'll release that as a bonus. <laughs> It'd be That's very exciting. popular. <laughs> All right. So last question. Uh, there's been some great fictional teachers uh, such as Professor Dumbledore from Harry Potter and Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. Who is everyone's favorite fictional teacher? Uh, Susan, I'm going to start with you. Well, it was funny when I was thinking about this question, the the movie that popped into my mind was the one with Goldie Hawn. And I thought she was like the gym teacher, but I realized now she's the football coach and it was the movie, The Wildcats. And I just loved that movie when I was a kid. Like I was always on like a losing baseball team. So it was just like really inspirational to me. And I, I used to super love Goldie Hawn too when I was little. So yeah, that was uh, that was the one that popped into my head. But I guess she's more of a coach than a teacher. Yeah, same, same thing. <laughs> so kind. Yeah, absolutely. Melanie, how about you? The first teacher that popped into my mind was Robin Williams and Dead Poets Society. Um, I just remember really loving that movie and feeling like he had uh, such a, you know, that special Robin Williams energy. Um, and then I also really love Tina Fey in Mean Girls. I think she's the math teacher. And yeah, that movie is so hilarious. I have not rewatched it with my new, <laughs> new lens. <laughs> so I don't know how well it holds up, but I'm sure the Tina Fey character would be, you know, solid through the ages. So. I look forward to rewatching that. Yeah, that's a movie too. I'd love to go back and rewatch again. I think I saw it when it first came out, but I remember it being really funny. And hopefully, it's uh, hopefully I'm right. sure it still holds Fingers up. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Caroline, how about you? I, I mean, I couldn't really get my mind past Saved by the Bell. And so I don't know <laughs> what that says about me. Like, classes and teachers were not the focus of that series. I mean, basically, they did everything they could to not go to class. So I, I guess I'll pick Haley Mills as Miss Bliss from the, the original Good Morning Miss Bliss episodes of the original series that then became Saved by the Bell. It's a very long story that we don't really really have time to get into on the podcast today. But um, I mean, Haley Mills, she was always kind of that inspirational, bringing out the best, uh, trying to get the teachers, the, the kids inspired. Uh, so uh, yeah, I could see I could see her being one of my teachers. Uh, they're rebooting Say by the Bell. In fact, there was a trailer that was just released yesterday for the new reboot series. So, Caroline, I have yeah. a feeling in 2021, we might be doing a uh, Say by the Bell episode because there's some stuff we need to talk about. <laughs> hey, I, I have a lot of, uh, you know, Say by the Bell hot takes. Uh, so uh, get ready for all like the hot opinions of 1991 because I have a lot. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So right. we'll we'll pencil that one in. <laughs> well, uh, what about you, Bryce? Who is your your favorite fictional teacher? Uh, you know, I really had to think about this one as well. And uh, you know, he came across as really strict, but you know, as I got older, I sympathize more with Mr. Hand from uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second. That movie's not going to hold up with our new one. No, it absolutely will not. <laughs> It, that I'm is definitely a very, it. it is a very problematic movie <laughs> by 2020 standards. But Mr. Han, though, he was tough but fair. Um, is, you know, as long as you paid attention in his class and didn't waste his time. I always thought it was, you know, hilarious at the end of uh, the movie. Spoiler alert! He uh, shows up and uh, at, on the graduation night and uh, as Spicoli wants to go to the prom and, uh, you know, basically he calculated how much time Spicoli wasted in his class and then yeah you know, he reclaims his to... time absolutely <laughs> as adult adult bryce uh tips his hat to mr hand and uh yeah he was uh he was a very serious uh, uh teacher but he was he was tough but fair question for you bryce did you ever order a pizza to class which is something no, spicoli does in mr hand's class that's right. Yes. And I loved, uh, I did not do that. Um, high school Bryce was way too shy to even attempt to pull off ordering a pizza in the middle of class. But uh, I like to, Mr. Hand would uh, spread out, uh, made sure that everybody in class uh, tried to tried the pizza anyway. So that was, <laughs> that was also really funny. Thank you so much for joining us today, Susan and Melanie. Where can people go to find out more information about the How To Festival? People can go to our website, uh, epl.ca slash city of learners. There'll be more information there. And uh, once the sessions are up, people will also be able to search for them on our website. Great. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you haven't subscribed yet, we encourage you to hit the subscribe button so that you automatically get new episodes. Please also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We love getting reviews, love reading them. And most importantly, tell a friend about the show. Yeah, don't forget that we'll have a link to everything that we talked about in the show notes. And quick little plug, of course, if you are interested in uh, you know learning how to start your own podcast, uh, my session on that will be taking place on Sunday, November the 22nd. So we'll have a link to where you can sign up for that as well in our show notes. And uh, as Caroline mentioned, uh, we'd love, we love to hear from our listeners. Uh, you can reach us on Twitter at epl.ca and please use the hashtag EPL overdue fines so we can uh, see your comments. Uh, you can also email us at podcast at EPL.ca. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.